I just realised I never actually made an intro for this video. I'm actually recording this hours and hours and hours, like end of the day, later. Um, and this is the makeup and how well it's held up. So if this is not an advert for you to finish watching this video, I don't know what is. I just wanted to play around with makeup today. I had a few videos to film and I thought I would film a get ready with me while I kind of shot my stash. Um, but yeah, it turned into an unexpected, wow, this product is great. I've got this um, 111 Skin Rose Gold Radiance Booster. I think I got this in a FabFit Fun box like ages and ages ago. And then I was using it, I was like, oh, this is really nice. And I Googled it, so expensive, so, so, so expensive. So I decided that I really need to use this up before it goes bad because I will never be repurchasing this. I pulled out this Illamasqua Skin Base Foundation when I went through my makeup earlier and the shade, the shade is, I don't even think I can tell you. Oh, SB 4.5. I remember I really, really liked this and then I can't remember what I was looking at the other day, but it was um, something like a comment from me. It might've even been Twitter, you know, but a comment from me or maybe a review or something where I was saying that it was even better than the double wear from Estee Lauder, which at the time was my absolute, absolute favorite. And I'd just completely forgotten about this base. So this is kind of part of the fun of really going through my entire collection is I found things that I totally forgot existed. And this is a lot more high coverage than you would imagine by the name Skin Base. What does it say? Skin Base? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like you would think this was going to be more of a tint from that name, but it is quite, it's quite heavy. It may be actually a little bit drier than I should be wearing right now because my, my skin is quite flaky on this tretinoin journey I'm on. Something I have been quite enjoying recently is this Herborean CCI. It's a radiance eye contour cream and it's super, super brightening. Something that again, I wouldn't necessarily have um, taken for what it is. Like CCI, okay, it's going to be kind of uh, a very lightweight concealer is what it sounds like. It's going to just be kind of not too heavy, not too high coverage. And it's not crazy at all, but it's definitely a lot more, it's a lot more um, obvious, a lot more brightening than I expected it to be. It's, it, it really does hide any kind of darkness and I'm not too bad in terms of um, dark circles or anything, but it just is like a, whew. And this is another product that you would imagine would be quite lightweight. I mean, it is lightweight, but I mean like light in terms of coverage. And it doesn't feel or look heavy at all. It looks very skin-like, but it is ultra brightening. I don't have incredibly dark under eyes, so I can't tell you it would be like absolutely amazing if you've got really, really dark circles. But it's not something that I notice massively with most products. And when I put this on, I was like, wow, I really could see an immediate difference. And it didn't feel or look like I was wearing anything really heavy. Looking for brow recommendations, I have run out of all my favourite, I like like a little micro pen, you know, like a little pencil, um, and my mirror's over here, uh, and I am looking to buy another one. I've got this hourglass one at the moment, which is fine, kind of reminds me of the Smashbox one that I loved, so for so many years I was obsessed with that, um, and it was very similar to this, this kind of angled pencil, but I want one of the little micro ones again, and rather than just buy the same again, I do really like the NYX. I thought I would ask you guys, what is your favorite brow product right now? You also have this NYX The Brow Glue, which I dug out when I was on my let's find all my makeup kick. And I feel like I bought this in the hopes that I would be able to pull up the tail end of my brows because as my microblading fades, you can see where on one side, this side, the um, person who did it for me, she's kind of, to try and make my eyebrows even, she lifted this brow because this brow is naturally higher. Um, but it means that as they fade away, I've kind of got a very obvious secondary brow line above my natural brow line. I feel like I bought this thinking, okay, the reviews are pretty good. It's supposed to be like glue because my eyebrows aren't very good, but I don't think it did very much, honestly. Um, but as with all these things, I want to give them a better, fair trial before I really say, no, absolutely rubbish. I mean, it's very tacky, 
once it dries. Maybe it's like when you do soap brows and you're supposed to push them down. I know that I follow someone called Rebecca Patel and she was raving about using um, hair wax. It was like that got to be spiked or whatever hair gel. And I never bought any because my brows aren't that fantastic in terms of like needing taming. It's just really that one bit that I want to make sure it's... But I might have to have a go with that this year. Um, right, I also pulled out this. Daniel Sandler liquid blush. I was so excited to get this when I did. And I hardly ever use it. Watercolour liquid blush. The colour I have is Cherub. They look like this. These were one of those things that was all the rage when it was all the rage. But it's actually a bit of a pain to use because it's literally liquid. And it goes everywhere. Uh, let me see what I can get on my beauty blender. Not tons. Let's see actually get a mirror involved so I'm not using my I did buy a little handy dandy mirror that I could use for while I'm filming because I most of the time when I'm doing these get ready with these um I'm using my viewfinder and that is not ideal <laughs> you cannot really tell what makeup looks like in a viewfinder okay that is actually really pretty very natural I don't know why I ever stopped using that. I do, it's a pain to use. I got out of bronzer, but I'm going in a different direction because this has taken me somewhere else. I do want a highlight though, and the other day I saw someone use the highlight before their powder. Kind of blew my mind a little bit because as she said, who was it? I think it was Sam Shulman. Um, and she said that she sees all these people with, oh, their skin looks absolutely amazing. And then they put their highlight on and suddenly there's like a stripe of texture where there was none before. And so she started putting on a highlight before her powder and that kind of like diffused any of that. I really liked that idea. So I'm gonna use this, which is the Topshop Chameleon Highlight in Mother of Pearl. This is not even a thing anymore, but I found this in my collection was like, I should be using this because it's such a gorgeous, let me just swatch this on the back of my hand because I don't even know if it's gonna, I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see. It's like a color shift. So beautiful, it's like a blue, pink, bronzy amazingness. And actually, before I put that on my cheeks, I'm gonna put on some eye primer because I'm gonna put that on my eyes as well. Won't that be a serious glow? This is the uh, Hourglass Eye Primer, it's nice. I don't think it's worth the money, but it's nice. I always think with luxury products, sometimes you just wanna buy something that's a little bit spendy. Um, it's not even necessarily a thing of, is it worth the money? It's just like you wanna treat yourself to something that's a little bit luxury. And in those categories are a lot of products that I would say, yeah, this is a nice product. I don't think it's necessarily worth the difference in cash that it is compared to other products that are like it on the market. But if you want something from that particular brand, it's a nice product. It's just kind of worth noting the difference because there definitely is one. Ooh, this is... Why have I never used this as an eyeshadow before? I'm gonna use this little Colourpop um, single shadow in Roulette. Are Colourpop still a thing? I think they are. Uh, a little angled brush to just do powder liner with a tiny little wing within my lid because my eyes are hooded. Now for the highlight on the cheeks. I'm gonna be sparing here because it is quite a pow. Really need to bring the uh, mirror closer to me. I feel like it's just shadow central. Oh wow. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. Now I'm going in with all the powder before I do my mascara because otherwise I will get that everywhere. This I'm using is the Hourglass Fail. I am really liking this um, and time will tell because I, <sighs> powder so difficult. Sometimes it is worth the splurge with the powder but uh, I was using another quite expensive powder a while ago and I feel like it really made me break out when I was baking so I don't want to influence anyone to spend big money on anything until I really feel like, yes, feel comfortable to say, totally, totally worth it. I honestly can't even. Oh, it's like almost that like glass skin trend. You truly don't imagine <laughs> at 37 almost you're gonna be able to achieve that. I've been sitting on that highlight for a really long time. Tweezerman eyelash curlers, Lancome Lash Idol. Idol, Idol. I'm between lip things, but I think I'm gonna use the Kylie uh, Candy K lip liner and liquid lip. I cannot talk and do this at the same time. So, 
as if by magic, that's the lip liner and the matching liquid lip. I love it. I really, really like this. In fact, I would quite like to try more of the Kylie lip range this year because these are a really nice formula. I'm going to try out this um, infallible mattifying setting spray as well. Uh, I'll come back to you at the end of the day and let you know how my makeup wore. Now I need to do my hair and uh, I'm going to film the videos that you probably have already seen this week. If you followed them, I did a uh, makeup inventory and um, a beauty budget for 2023. It's been a lot this week. I've gone through every single item of makeup that I've got, but it's been a really, really interesting and useful experience because it means that now when I come to do something like this, I'm like, there were some things that I'd forgotten I'd had and I can pull those out. I don't think you're going to believe me when I tell you how long it's been since that last clip. 10 hours. I'm just about to get in the shower and go to bed. Uh, and I just remembered I was supposed to film um, the end of the day. So I've definitely seen some like settling. Uh, there's some kind of dryness here. I mean, you do have particularly dry skin. Like I say, I'm having a bit of a uh, situation because I am um, finally persevering with my skin in me again after not consistently using it in November and December. So I'm kind of going through that purge again. So that's to be expected. And um, a lot of that is the foundation and the powder that I used as well. So kind of like a little bit of settling into the lines. But this setting spray is pretty amazing. Can we agree? I think so. I'm gonna um, go out of my way to use it a few more times this week. And next week's Friday faves, you might see a certain setting spray uh, included because I'm really, really impressed. I'm really glad that I did this actually because looking in the mirror now, like here to here, I think it looks great. If you get really close, you can kind of see where the makeup is like deteriorating. But at this distance, I think it looks freshly applied and I'm really, really impressed. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I did post two other videos this week. Wednesday's video, which was the full on declutter everything I went through absolutely everything. And then Friday is uh, me kind of giving you a full inventory of what I have, what I want to um, give myself as kind of a budget for this year, um, if you're interested in those things. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.